Moving on to the next step of the code lab, it's time to set up our environment to actually code in. If you open up step four as shown, you can find the requirements for this tutorial. I'll show you how to do all of this on a website called glitch.com, so no installation of any software is required. You could also use codepen.io or any other online JavaScript editor if you wish, but if you want to just follow along, I'll be showing my examples being built on glitch.com. Also, if you prefer to work locally with your own web server, be sure to read the code lab instructions in this section to avoid issues later. Namely, do not double click on HTML files to open them in the web browser. You must access them served correctly from a web server, not from the file system. Otherwise, access to the webcam and more could be blocked by your browser. If you're using Glitch or CodePen as suggested, then this will be done automatically for you to save time. And these sites are very popular with front-end developers to share code snippets or make quick prototypes for the purpose of learning. Okay, so open a new browser window and head over to glitch.com. It should look something like this once loaded. And if you're not already a user, you will need to sign up at the top right or log in if you already have an account so that you can save your work. You may also choose not to log in, but do note that anything you create will not be saved if you choose to close your browser window. Okay, so I'll wait for you to sign in Go ahead and pause the video and continue when you're ready. All right, now you're logged in, head to the example project page shown at the bottom of the slide. Once the project loads, you should see a button underneath the preview that says Remix. Click this button to fork a copy of the code to your own signed in profile to set up a new project with some boilerplate code to help you get started. Once the Remix page loads, you should see your newly created project. The key thing to note here is that on the left hand side, you have a column that shows you the five files that were created for you. First, license.md, which you don't need to touch, just contains an open source license you might want to use with your code if you were to ever to release this. Next, you have readme.md that renders the current page shown and explains what the project is about. Feel free to edit it as you wish to take notes. It essentially uses the markdown format just like on GitHub, and you can click the markdown button near the top to edit this file as shown in the screenshot. Clicking on index.html, you can see it contains all of the page content in HTML markup and currently will contain a few lines of HTML to import the TensorFlow.js library along with a header and paragraph tag in the page body. Script.js will be where you write most of your JavaScript code and for now it just prints the loaded version of TensorFlow.js to the paragraph tag that was defined in the HTML page that you just saw. And finally, style.css, which as you may have guessed, is where you'll place all your CSS style rules to make everything look great. Now in the next section, you'll set up the HTML foundations for the web app, so I'll see you over there.